Hello everybody, welcome to another Scratch tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be working on our tunnel movement. I want each ring to go to the mouse. Now before we start that, this is what we have so far. What I'm showcasing right now is what we have. If you do not have what is on this screen, then you may want to go back to parts one or two and see if there's anything you've missed or done wrong. Anyways, with that said, let's get started. So, to make it move toward the mouse, we could just replace these zeros with the mouse X and mouse Y. However, that makes our entire tunnel follow the mouse, which isn't exactly what we want. So, what we want to do is make two lists, which I have already created for us. So, we create two lists that will tell us the points for each ring. So, just like we have our initialize variables block, what you want to do is make a block and name this initialize lists and make this a run screen without refresh block. You want to call this block right after you initialize the variables. I'm going to go and initialize lists right here. Now in variables, I'm going to go and delete all of ring X over here, I'm going to delete all of ring Y. Now I'm going to go and repeat uh, maybe 30 times. Now for this, I'm going to add a 0 to ring X. And I'm going to add a 0 to ring Y. So if I show these lists, as you can see, this will come up with 30 zeros right there. So, now we want to block that will calculate our lists and find the values. So, let's go and make a block. Calculate list values. And make this run screen without refresh. So, now I'm going to go and put this right here. Now I want to call this block every single time we complete drawing our tunnel. Now in calculate list values, we want to, so we're going to have a scanner variable that leaps through all of our rings to detect the X and Y's. <clears throat> However, we don't want to start at the beginning and then keep on going up because then our last ring would be the base of the tunnel, which is not what we want. We want the middle or the circle ring to be the base of our tunnel. So, <clears throat> So, what we want to do is actually start at the end of our list and then go calculating uh, backwards. And our first item will be the mouse X and Y. So, this is, we can still do this. Set index to the number of rings. Now, you drag a repeat block. Now you want to do minus one because we already start at our index and repeat the number of rings minus one. 
Now you are going to replace our item with our previous item. So replace item index of ring x with item of ring x index minus 1. Item index minus 1 of ring x. Now let's duplicate that and put it there. Now replace the ring x's with ring y. And of course, at the end of our loop, we'd want to change index by minus 1 so that it will check through all of them. Finally, at the end of our loop, replace item 1 of ring x with mouse x. Duplicate this block and replace item 1 of ring y with mouse y. Now we calculated our list values. So instead of doing mouse x and mouse y in this, we can just do item index of ring x and item index of ring y. Now as you can see, each ring individually follows its center. So each ring is, and well, yeah, you see what I mean? It's got that nice effect to it. However, not exactly what we want, because as you can see, we have a lot of gaps, which isn't really necessary. And the way we can fix this is finding the distance between each of our points. And then after we find our distance, we can add that number and change the radius by it. So first, we want to figure out the digit. So make a block, find distance, and add four inputs in this. X, I'm going to have it up y, x2, and y2. And I'm going to make this run screen without refresh, even though it's basically only one block. So I'm going to put this block right there. Now for this, you are going to make a variable distance. Now over here, I'm going to go and grab a set distance block. And there is a distance algorithm that many of you viewers may know. But you want to find the square root of, put a plus, then a times, and then another times. Put a minus into here. And what you want to do is subtract y2 from y. Now duplicate this and put it there. I wish Scratch had a square root block. That would save a little bit of space in this. Now let's do the same thing but for x on this side. So we want to do x2 minus x and duplicate that for this. Now, as you can see, we have our nice little distance algorithm all filled in. Now, what we want to do is find the distance up here. Let's duplicate this and this and this and this. So we have four inputs. Now, drag out a plus one and duplicate it so that you have it twice. Now we have the inputs that we will need. Put an index in one of ring X and one of ring Y. Now let's fill these values in. 
So for your first, so for your last input, you want to do item index plus one of ring Y. Then your second to last will be item index plus one of ring X. Your second to first input will be item index of ring Y, and your very first input will be item index of ring X. So we find the distance between those two points. Now instead of setting the pen size to ring thickness, set the pen size to ring thickness plus distance, which we can actually hide now like that. And instead of just radius, you want to drag in a plus in here. And then over here, you want to drag a divided by 2. And you want a plus distance divided by 2. Now let's test it out. As you can see, boom, we have movement down with absolutely no gaps at all. Now we have gotten our movement down. However, we have some problem when we do this because our outer ring is really large. But that and the fact that it basically just covers in a corner like that. This is because our sprite is actually on the edge. So what we want to do is set the pen is set our size to a really large number. Hmm. I'm, hmm. This did uh, not work. In our costumes, I'm actually going to make something completely random. Uh, oh my. I just made one tiny thing. And just made one tiny circle, and then suddenly the screen turns black. It's funny. Oh, of course, I need to hide our character. That's why. <laughs> that was funny. Okay. So I'm going to hide also. There we go. That fixed our problem. Now, as you can see, the outer ring is no longer dragging on the corner like that. And apparently, the max size is not 30,000, it's 2,700. So just to reduce a number, I'm just going to type that in. Anyways, that is our movement down. I know the outer ring is kind of annoying, but in the next tutorial, we will have our tunnel go entirely on screen, which is really exciting. Anyways, anyways, that, anyways, that's all for this tutorial. And as always, peace. Stay tuned for part